Welcome back to Mad Men Review. Alright, so here's the thing. We all know Walmart as that megastore. That big old chunk of Americana where you can snag anything from discounted jeans to, yeah, firearms. I mean, where else can you grab a fishing rod, some party snacks, a flat screen TV, and a Savage Axis in 308 all under one roof? But every so often, between those infinite aisles and under those glaring fluorescent lights, things can take a dramatic twist. Imagine you were just there, minding your business, going through your shopping list, and boom! The situation turned straight up Hollywood action movie. That's what we're diving into today. These aren't your usual, someone took the last discounted toaster on Black Friday scuffles. Nope. We're talking about those moments that have folks dropping their shopping carts wide-eyed, thinking, this ain't your everyday Walmart run. In this video, we'll highlight 10 of the most head-scratching shootings that have ever shaken up the aisles of Walmart. Now, we ain't making light of these tragic incidents. We're only shedding light on the sheer wildness of them. Maybe, just maybe, by diving deep into these absurdities, we can get people to take a pause and rethink some things before going to a Walmart. Number 10, June 17, 2018, around 5 p.m., in Tumwater, Washington, chaos erupted when Tim O'Day, 44, with a history of drug and weapons offenses, opened fire at a Walmart. He shot two individuals, Rick Fievez, critically injured, and a 16-year-old Danner Barton, shot in the hand. But the situation took a turn when an unnamed 47-year-old from Oakville, wearing hats as diverse as a pastor and a medic, intervened. This armed civilian shot and halted Day's terrifying spree. Eyewitnesses hailed this anonymous man as a hero, asserting that without his brave actions, more lives could have been lost. The grim incident started with a potential DUI near a Toyota dealership, evolving rapidly into a full-blown shooting episode at that Walmart. Number 9. Carolina. August 16, 2016. A confrontation at a Walmart ended with police officers shooting and killing a 32-year-old guy named Carl Nivens. The incident began around 8.30 a.m. when officers responded to a report of suspicious activity at the store on Blowing Rock Boulevard. Chief Scott Brown of the Lenore Police stated that Nivens, upon being confronted, attempted to flee, but eventually pulled a 38 caliber revolver and fired at the officers. Officers retaliated, resulting in Nivens' death. The handgun, which was visible in the store's surveillance footage, had been reported stolen days earlier. Two associates of Nivens, Natasha Ray Stanley, 24, and Jose Alberto Flores, 33, were arrested on unrelated charges. Stanley had a warrant for failing to appear on non-support, and Flores had a felony charge for possessing a firearm as a convicted felon. Local residents expressed their shock, having lived nearby. Some of them even worked at that Walmart for years. Customers were allowed restricted access to the store after the shooting. Chief Brown stands by his officers' actions, stating that the shooting was 100% justified. The officers involved were placed on paid administrative leave, but was back in no time. Number 8. On July 19, 2023, Total madness went down at a Walmart in Florida City. Two groups got into it, and things escalated big time. Shots were fired. Sadly, a 23-year-old dude, Nathaniel Bays, didn't make it out. And another guy got hit, but is hanging in there. People on their phones caught some of the craziness right after it went down. Folks inside said they heard about six gunshots, and then, like, everyone just bolted. From what the police are saying, three of the peeps involved in the argument got cuffed. One of them, Steve Leston, 25, 
is looking at some serious charges, while the other two, Jamari Hodge, 21, and an employee at that Walmart, Roberto Acevedo, 20, got booked for battery. The parking lot was swamped with cops after all this went down. That particular Walmart is a big pit stop for those heading to the Florida Keys, so you can imagine the scene. Walmart's all like, this is so sad, our store's shut for now. They are working with the cops while this whole mess gets sorted. Crazy times, man. Number 7. San Antonio, Texas, September 16, 2023, right around 8.59 p.m. Some heavy drama unfolded at a Walmart on Bandera Road. A dude named Andrew Harrison Lester, already on the radar for offing a random lady named Amber Nicole Ashlaw, led the cops on a wild motorcycle chase that spanned two counties. The whole time, the guy was riding his bike with the gun he used to off Ashlaw sitting on his lap, like right out of an action flick. Eventually, Lester decides Walmart's a place to be and trades some shots with the Bandera police officer in the parking lot. He gets hit in the shoulder, but thinks it's a good idea to run inside and fire off some more. Lucky for everyone, no other folks got hurt in the store. Though I bet there was a lot of spilled milk and cereal from panicked carts. Cops nabbed Lester in the parking lot afterward, and off he went to the hospital. A few days later, Lester's looking at a felony murder charge, and they're letting him out on bail. San Antonio. Huh. Number 6. Hiram, Georgia, September 21, 2023. A 26-year-old guy, James Wyatt Nicholas Norton, approached his ex-girlfriend, 20-year-old Zoe Nicole Messenger. They chatted briefly, but things took a dark turn when James pulled out a gun, shot Zoe, and then himself. When the cops rolled up, they found both individuals with gunshot wounds. And even though they got rushed to the hospital super fast, neither made it. The freaky part, their conversation looked pretty chill, so nobody saw it coming. When the shots went off around 7.22 p.m., people booked it out of the store. Digging a bit into their history, turns out Zoe and James had been a thing since 2022. Just a week before the incident, Zoe updated her Facebook status, saying she's in a new relationship. Walmart's pretty shaken up about the whole thing, confirmed James was one of their own, and said they're going to be closed for a good bit. Number 5. On July 30, 2019, Martez Terrell Abram, once just a regular guy working at Walmart in South Haven, Mississippi, had a massive meltdown. This former employee cranked the crazy up to 11. He strutted into the Walmart, sparked a fire, and tragically gunned down two managers, Anthony Brown and Brandon Gales. The kicker? Before this mayhem, Walmart had given Abram the boot for showing off a knife to a co-worker. Like, who does that? After the shooting, Abram made his way to the parking lot where he had a confrontation with the police. A South Haven police officer got shot in the back, but his bulletproof vest saved his life. Abram was shot twice by the police and hospitalized. Three years later, Abram, after being convicted of two counts of capital murder and one count of attempted murder, received the death penalty for his crimes. The decision was swift, with the jury deliberating for only 55 minutes. Especially notable, as Abram chose to testify in his own defense. Guess he didn't know playing a lawyer was a bad idea. Number 4 you remember hearing about that wild situation in Thornton, Colorado, back in 2017? Man, it was crazy. This guy, Scott Allen Ostrom, just strolled into a Walmart on November 1st, around 6.10 p.m., and started firing shots with his handgun. Three people, poor souls, didn't make it out. Carlos Moreno, Victor Vasquez, and Pamela Marquez. The whole place went into chaos, with folks just running every which way. 
Cops were on it, though. They arrested Ostrom the next morning, not even ten miles from where it all went down. Wild thing, cameras caught him leaving Walmart as chill as when he walked in. Dude had a messy past, too. Loaded arrests, some heavy debt, and even a stepsister saying he had some brain damage from an old LSD trip. Legal side of things got heavy. He ended up in court, and after some back and forth, pleaded guilty in 2018. The judge, no mercy, slapped him with three life sentences plus 48 years. What a saga, huh? Number 3. On June 8, 2014, Vegas went wild when this couple, Jared and Amanda Miller, went on a shooting spree. These two started their chaos at a CC's Pizza, offing two cops, Saldo and Beck. They got all dramatic, throwing a Gadsden flag and swastika on Beck and stealing the officer's guns. After declaring the start of a revolution, they dashed into a Walmart. A brave dude named Joseph Wilcox tried to intervene, but Amanda got the drop on him. Cops rolled up and things got heated. End game. Jared got dropped by police, and Amanda did herself in after getting injured. When the dust settled, they found a bunch of weapons. M&P 9mm, Ruger 38 revolver, a stolen Glock 17, an H&K USP 9mm, and a Winchester 1300 shotgun. At their place, they found some creepy plans to storm courthouses. These two were seriously anti-government. Jared was no stranger to trouble, having a rap sheet from previous years. Amanda didn't have priors, but she wasn't all sunshine and rainbows either. Both were all over social media, ranting and hinting at their plans. They were even at that Bundy Ranch standoff in 2014, but got kicked out because they were too radical. The motive? They were big-time haters of the government and seemed to worship the dudes behind the Columbine Massacre. Number 2 A crazy dude named Andre Marcus Bing went on a rampage at his Walmart job in Chesapeake, Virginia on November 22, 2022. He was a night manager who hated his co-workers and had trouble with women. He bought a 9mm handgun that morning and practiced shooting before he showed up at work. Unfortunately, nothing on the interwebs confirms what specific handgun model it was. He shot one co-worker first, then crashed a meeting in the break room and shot more people, then walked around the store shooting randomly. He let one new employee go and told her to run home. He shot some people more than once, to make sure they were dead. He had a list of names of people he wanted to kill, and a suicide note that said he was sorry and religious. The cops came quickly and found him dead from shooting himself. He killed six co-workers and injured four others. It was one of the worst workplace shootings even in the U.S. The perp was 31 years old and had worked at Walmart for 12 years. He had no criminal record, which makes this particular Walmart shooting puzzling, to say the least. Number 1 On August 3rd, 2019, El Paso, Texas saw a horrifying day when a dude named Patrick Wood Crucius walked into a Walmart near Cielo Vista Mall and started shooting. Using a Wasser 10, which is a civilian version of the AKM, this 21-year-old racist ended up killing 23 folks and injuring 22 more. The FBI called it both domestic terrorism and a hate crime. Turns out, this was the deadliest attack against Latinos in recent U.S. memory. Before the shooting, Crucius posted some hate-filled manifesto online, ranting about white nationalism and anti-immigrant stuff. He even mentioned the Christchurch mosque shootings from earlier that year as some twisted inspiration. Fast forward to 2023, after deciding not to aim for the death penalty, the feds got him to plead guilty to a ton of murder and hate crime charges. The result? 
The guy got slammed with 90 life sentences back to back. But wait, there's more. Texas State's still gunning to potentially slap him with the death penalty if he's found guilty on their end. And that brings us to the end of this video. If it sparked some emotions, rattled your cage a wee bit, comment below. Please help our channel grow by smashing that like button, sharing the video with your pals, and subscribing. Give that notification bell a little ding too so you stay in the loop. Thanks for watching.